Susan Shy has written, painted and sewn since early childhood with a 1986 master's degree in painting from Kent State University. She began showing professionally in 1987's Quilt National, earning best of show. Her renegade style of artwork is a hybrid of fine art and quilt art, recognised by her narrative mix of edgy and personal painting, completely overlaid with her expansive writing of personal diary and socio-political commentary. Hi, I'm Susan Shy. I'm from Worcester, Ohio, and this is my first time in England, by the way, and uh, this is my exhibition called This American Life. My background is a combination of sewing and painting. I was a painter using stretch canvas and I was a sewer making my clothes and in um, 1979 uh, a feminist artist named Miriam Shapiro came to my college, the College of Worcester, and, and we talked about how feminist art should incorporate both those things, merge them together and as soon as I started taking my paintings off of canvases that were stretched I could sew them I could roll them up, I could carry them around, and to this day, one of my favorite things is I can put them in a box instead of building a crate. I can also photograph them much easier because the light doesn't bounce off of the canvas this way. Well, it's not a canvas, it's really a cloth, a cotton cloth. It doesn't bounce off like it does off a taut canvas. So there's many reasons besides the joy of sewing to make a quilt out of your art. This is my inauguration piece about um, Barack Obama being inaugurated in uh, January 2009. It's a landscape. It shows the Washington Mall with the, um, the Washington Monument in the background and one of my peace cozies as a beacon glowing out to the whole world. And this is his wife, Michelle. He's got his hand up. This is the Lincoln Bible, which he did his swearing in on. And his whole inaugural speech has written down his suit over the Bible and trickling down into the border because I didn't have enough room. But there's lots of other stories. There's stories about my own life mingled in with Obama stories. And then I kept going. I've been making Obama pieces way before this one and I'll keep making them way after this one because I haven't been a bit let down. So um, this is a piece about Barack Obama receiving the Nobel Peace Prize last year, and um, I'll talk, use it to show you how I work. Uh, I first start with a piece of white Kona cotton prepared for dyeing fabric, and I use my airbrush to draw the piece freehand after making a bunch of sketches that I don't look at. I use them to think out what I want to do. I can peek at them for reference, but I never copy from them when I'm actually drawing on the piece because when I paint the piece with my airbrush, um, it feels like dancing or maybe floating. But if you copy from a sketch while you're doing that, you'll just fall flat on your face. So it's got to be spontaneous. It's got to be enjoyable. And it's one of my favorite things to do. And then the next thing is to paint in the colors with the same instrument, with the airbrush. And that process is so quick. That's a couple of days at the most. And then the long process is writing. And I, I write stories that I, this has a lot of stuff taken from news articles, from, uh, I, I reference Wikipedia sometimes, my own opinions of things going on, but also I'll throw in things like when my daughter and my granddaughter and my son-in-law came to visit, uh, or when my husband uh, burned out a nest of bees. I mean, they never know what will show up and with the political stuff. Uh, these swans came in because I, I had been looking for an image for peace to go on here, and I thought these little swan um, favors from a wedding uh, reception that was my brother's wedding way back in 1964 were given to me to give to my sister-in-law, and I thought I'm going to use those because they look so peaceful. So they're sort of gliding in with peace, and that's that's how I feel that Obama is doing. But after the whole thing is written on, I, after I heat set everything, I lay the painting on a piece of bamboo batting and I make the batting stick out as far from the painting as I want the border to be thick. And then I find a backing fabric. This is a, a build up you can, you can see of a bunch of fabrics. That fabric has to go out past the batting far enough to come back and tuck under the painting so that uh, it's, I call it a self-border. Then everything gets pinned together, and I first sew all the way around the edge with the sewing machine. 
and everybody freaks out on that because that's not how you do it, but that's not, that is how I do it. And after the border is all sewn, then I um, start doing what I call crazy grids. I just might start maybe here or maybe here, and I'll sew all the way this way, and then all the way this way, and then all the way that way. And you see, I just keep rotating it, and I keep adding rows. Um, and if they're big quilts, I get totally lost inside them. I don't know if I'm going straight or crooked, and I am happy that way. And eventually, I end up deciding how much quilting I want in it. I've, I've got safety pins I'm taking out the whole time. And eventually, I can flip it over and work from the back, where I can see the sewing a little better, and I can see what needs to be put in yet. Like you can see on this one, it's pretty easy to see the quilting on there and I can fill in. I usually go through about four or five colors when I'm sewing in my grids because I like variety and I'm very conscious not to let them become um, a very orderly plaid looking thing. They have to be very erratic. So when I'm done with that, I get to do a little hand sewing, which I used to do tons of, but I don't anymore. Um, this is just a running stitch around the edge with pearl cotton. And then I used to sew lots and lots of beads, but now I sew just one or two little beads. This is my um, Green Temple Buddha Boy bead that I put on all of my pieces. And what happens is that now I can make a piece like this in a month or two, where a piece this size would have taken me nine months or more when I was hand sewing. I just had to at some point decide if I wanted to be remembered as a sewer or a painter and I came back full circle to my painting. And it's okay with me if you never saw my hand stitch pieces because what I'm doing is I'm, I'm making a time capsule of that time period from my life, from the life around me, and in politics and in culture. And I know I'll make a piece about this festival of quilts because it's, it's just so wonderful to meet so many people from so many different countries um, I guess in our country the difference is that they're all states instead of other countries and they have a much more homogenous culture. But I'm just soaking this up like a sponge and I highly recommend coming to Festival of Quilts if you can do it. And then you got to have some kidney pie. This piece is the back of all the, the kitchen tarot cards. You know how a card deck has the same design on the backs of all of them. And a tarot deck is different in that, well maybe it's the same, the card needs to be the same look on, if you have it upside down or right side up because there's a different interpretation if the card is upside down. So I hand drew the card quilt to be the same images roughly in the same place roughly. They're a little bit different because they're hand drawn but I think they still work because the drawing is so complex you don't have a chance to really figure out which is which. So it's got St. Quilta and she's got a bunch of images from the whole deck. She's got um, She's got a moon, we got a moon card. The cat is in the first card with the colander. And there's colander over there. It's got a kitchen sink, which is in the world card. Um, she's got timer, which is the hanged one card. And um, I didn't have a pie piece, but there's lots of pies all the way through it. And um, I, I knew that this would be reproduced so small, you wouldn't be able to read any of the writing. So I went ahead and wrote a lot of political stuff. Um, this was before the election, I think. So it was right before uh, Obama got elected president. So it was a lot about Obama and McCain. But nobody will know that looking at the cards. So I'm safe. I was telling you about the Kitchen Tarot. And this is the first place I've ever been able to vend uh, the new deck of cards that's come out from Hay House Publishing. Uh, it's got 22 of my images of my art quilts, some of which are in this 21 quilt exhibition, some of which are um, not here. Um, my friend Dennis Fairchild did the writing for the quilt, or the um, kitchen tarot. And this is the front of the box. This is Denny Fairchild's little book that explains how to use them. And these are the cards. And so, Right here at Festival, if you buy one of my decks, I'm putting a drawing for you either inside the lid or inside the book. And you can see I've got some left. So I've been having a good time uh, explaining to people how tarot works and how my thinking interprets it into the kitchen tarot, which is all about nurturance and caring for each other, in, not just in the family, but also in the world. I'm Susan Shy. 
My exhibition is This American Life, and I'm here at the Festival Quilts in Birmingham, England.